The point is this, when you have an in, an ineffective and incompetent government, be, we are all victims. And don't let anybody deceive you. Those of you who are in business, your business will have been better today if we have a competent and uh, 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 effective and performing government. It will happen. As I said, I'm giving excuses, uh, we, we met many challenges. Now, if there are no challenges, then you wouldn't need to come. Yes. 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 Huh? Yes. Yes. If there are no challenges, you don't need to come. And you are, you come in because you know that there are challenges. And then giving us excuse that you have many challenges, that's why you haven't achieved result. And then you still want to go. The first lesson I learned in my military uh, training. It's never reinforced failure. What we have now is failure. Never you reinforce failure. Never you reinforce failure. Let failure be failure. I'm gone. And if you do not see what you should see, you will then be a victim of what you don't like. Because it's only when you see what you should see and you do what you should do, that you put away what you do not like. If you don't see what you should see, and you don't do what you should do, you will be a victim of what you don't. Welcome back, well, Chief. I know you were making a point in terms of, uh, you know, those who uh, left PDP, who are in APC, who have cases to answer. But even if those lists were still made public of those persons, do you think this will in any way address or show naysayers that indeed we are taking steps to fighting corruption? Well, even if we say we are taking steps, which I agree, Maybe Everybody. meaningful steps. Are, are they meaningful? And no, that's what I'm saying. Okay. The system will not allow any, you know, efforts to be meaningful. Because what we have seen is that it is now going to three years that this uh, present government came into being. They have tried, which no other government has done before them except the military during the first uh, coming of Buhari. But what I'm saying is this, no matter how you try corrupt officials, no matter how you try public officers, no matter how you try politicians, if the system is basically corrupt itself, it is Odongbo Duru. Right. if I could bring you in, because I mean, in the context of what you first said, even if those lists were published, uh, looking at the big picture, do you think that will have any impact on our quest to read this corruption, at least say that we're making those steps to get us where we need to be. You see, <clears throat> what I think we should be doing in Nigeria is let us create systems that would make whatever thing that we want to achieve possible. For example, we have to reform our criminal justice system we have to reform a lot of things. And that, they've been talking about that for yes, decades. Yes, and that has not happened. Unless that, you see. Why is that the case, by the way? You see, l l l let me tell you, like I said here on Saturday when I was here, I was saying we have these predictions for not trying to follow the laws that we have in the land. That was the reason why Niger Delta people got amnesty. That's the reason why they are suggesting that Boko Haram members who renounce arms will also get amnesty. That again will be another basis for another group of people, violent in nature, to come and ride roughshod over us, and then they will be expecting amnesty. 
what I say is that systems and institutions must be created that will take care of whoever has a deviant behavior, like this mammoth stealing of the Nigerian resources. So once we are not able to do this, then we have not started taking meaningful steps to fight corruption. Chief Clark, he's talked about the question of working within the ambit of the law. Now, it's only the court by our constitution that can declare one guilty or not guilty. So is it right then to go ahead and publish names and call them looters, not alleged looters, legally? Is that correct? Well, if you look at that list, the preponderance of names that I found there, they have been accosted. Some of them have refunded. Yes. Some of them have been charged. Not one of them has not been invited for question. But some of them have cases in court already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Some, during investigation, were found to have received, they have refunded. I know some, some of them who said, oh, 300 million, okay, I take it back, then you can go. Some of them were charged to court. But there is not one single one of them who has not been called to questioning to say something about this amount. So whether you say alleged or not alleged, they have been confronted. Some of them admitted, yes, I received it, but instruction from above said they should give it to me. I don't know the source of it. Some of them said, yes, I received it. I have spent it on the party. Some of them said, okay, those who could refund, refunded. Those who could not refund have been charged to court. So it's not a question of alleged. It's not a question of alleged. So should they, can some of them then complain? They cannot complain. I saw in the papers this morning a, a particular governor. If I were his counsel, I would tell him to take it cool. No, no governor in Nigeria who has spent eight years as a governor can feel that they won't find one small thing against him. I saw him, he says he's going to go to court. Well, let him go to court. But he has refunded too, I'm aware of that. That wow. particular yes. governor has refunded. And he still so wants to go to court. But I saw him on television in this new party they are forming by, you know. They are, many of them have been going around it, as I said earlier on. We are just rotating these people. And for the next 20 years, there is one man amongst them. When Babangida was in power, he was a big shot. When PDP too, he was a big shot. Now the third party is being formed by Basanjo. I saw him on television. They are rotating them. You know, that, Chief, uh, when you say rotating, a lot of people may disagree with you because this list, as it's published, seems to suggest to them that we don't have um, corrupt individuals in the APC. And that's why we don't have in APC, APC? APC members. <laughs> in, Many in of them list. are corrupt. But we cannot substantially say that, at least going by this list. No, you see, this fight for corruption has to start one way. Um, after Abbasanjo left, nobody you know, looked into his government. If the succeeding government was like APC then and opposition, they would have looked into his governance. And they will have seen a lot, a lot. Even when he was in power, some of his governors were being, you know, uh, let me see a let me see a Ibori and others. Uh, they were, you know, but because it was not an opposition party that took over from him, they could not investigate his past performance. Now, Jonathan has gone. It's an opposition now. In, so this is the first opportunity in Nigerian democracy that an opposition will now have. And what they are doing is to draw the attention of people to all these looters. If tomorrow APC loses election and PDP comes back, they are going to do the same. They are going to do the same. And then you will find that the names in the list will be APC and not PDP. So you see, don't let us find an excuse. We are starting a war against corruption. It has to start somewhere. Yes. Mumu, let me ask you uh, in conclusion too. Do you think that your actions are such that you have that conviction that yes, these actions I'm taking 
is well intended will get Nigeria elsewhere, or you think, well, you might as well just uh, see what you can do if you can achieve anything? No, you see, let me say straight away that um, the alternative would be to be despondent and say, let's leave it to them. That to me is not an option. We have to keep at this in the interest of Nigerians yet unborn. Fine place to anchor then. Uh, we've been having or talking to two gentlemen, Adetunku Bamumuni, the Executive Director of SERAP, and Chief Robert Clark, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on this morning. Always my pleasure. Uh, let's hand to Abuja and find out uh, what do they think of this matter? Is it political, legal, or what?